I've got to start this right now because there are 45 minutes left until... Well, there are 45 minutes left of the year. So if I started it a bit later, um, I, the whole commotion of a new year starting would have interrupted the uh, podcast. At least I assume it would because... Everyone lets off fireworks, and it never used to be like that. The fireworks at New Year's, I only seem to remember it occurring with the millennium, and then every year afterwards, it's just become a thing. And... That's China for you, right? I guess they're taking over the world one day at a time. And I, for one, welcome our new leaders. So you haven't heard from me for a while. And for that I apologise, but I thought, you know what? New year. New start. Let's go back to weekly. The holiday season is over. Nothing out of the ordinary should be happening. It really all kicked off Christmas week. I've been fine. My treatment's been going well. No effects as yet. I've mastered injecting myself, just about. I wouldn't say I've mastered it, but I can do it now. But I am on the lowest dosage, and that is making my blood count steady, but it is not improving it. So I'm still needing the transfusions. I have a transfusion in a week. And then I have a doctor's appointment on 15th of January. And I assume at that point my doctor, my new doctor, whoever that may be, will up the dosage because I'm on the lowest, as I said. And I can go up to double and a bit more. I'm on 0.4 mils. I can go up to 0.6, and then 0.8, and then finally 1 mil, which is the whole syringe. So as I said, everything has been fine in the land of Tom's body. Tom's brain has been uncharacteristically optimistic for this time of year, and especially given the circumstances. My 94-year-old grandma passed away on the 15th of December. And she was a very important part of my life, right up until this year. Right up until her death. She passed away in a sleep, which is good. So this led to a funeral on Christmas Eve. And I've never been to a funeral before. My auntie died a few years ago, who was the daughter of my grandma. She had Down syndrome and lived to be 50, I think. But back then, I had crippling social anxiety. And I was afraid of going to the funeral. So I didn't go to my auntie's funeral. And everyone was, was fine with that. But, 
you know, I had a lot to work. I had a lot of work to do on my confidence and my. And I still, seemingly, have a lot of work to do on my confidence. And my grandma dying has really kind of hammered that home because this is somebody who was in my life. And we played bingo together, and she answered quizzes, and I wrote down the answers because she knew more than me. And now, she is dead, and she can't do any of that stuff anymore. And it really reiterates the point of living for the moment, not to let silly things like one worrying what people think of you get in the way. I don't open my mouth sometimes because I don't think anyone cares what I have to say. Even right now. I don't want to hear what I have to say. I don't want to be faced with how it sounds, the fact that my voice isn't important. And I get to feeling like that sometimes. And I'm feeling like that at the moment. Which is weird because I made I met up with the friends that I made. Remember the very first episode of Tom's Brain I told you all about going to the filmmakers meetup and how I walked home with somebody and I made a friend. Well, me and that friend met up and we went out for a drink. Just coffee and tea. And... I had to force myself to talk. No, I didn't. But for some reason, right now... When it should be at its most easy, at its most easy, I'm I'm really struggling, and and which is a shame because there's no way I'm going to make the time limit now. But whatever, we're just going to see in the new year together. You and me, crazy Tom, Tom's brain. This is the podcast. This is this is me talking to Tom's brain. Tom's brain is thinking you don't have a worthwhile opinion. Don't bother making friends because they don't care what you have to say. And I can't tell myself that that's not true, because where are my friends? It's New Year's Eve, and I'm alone. I'm all alone. Except for Kaiser, my dog. I'm going to reflect on this year. And be more positive. Because this got very depressing very quickly. I think I just needed to get it all out of my system. I haven't been talking for a while. Sans that meetup. Where I just basically... I, w I talked, but I didn't have a conversation. 
and I know I didn't, and, um, I am very doubtful we all meet up for another drink. Right, what did I say about being positive? 2014 has marked one of the most life-changing years since probably 2004. 2004 I left, I left school, I left education and I feel like 2014, I left my old ways of being treated for this disease that I live with. And it's been quite overwhelming. Now that I stop and think back at the start of the year, it looked like it was going to be an ordinary year. And then it was just by chance, really, that it, my line in my chest got a puncture. And it was the right time for it to be taken out. That led to having a podcast fitted. And the amount of freedom not having a Hickman line opened up. It's kind of scary. I'm still not used to it. I'm holding back a lot. And I'm being held back a lot, to be honest. My mum is still as overbearing as always. Despite the fact that I was left to my own devices for nine days, I looked after myself and Kaiser when my mum went away on holiday. So you would think after seeing that my mum would come back and give me the benefit of the doubt. But things are still slowly moving forward. I'm gonna have to make some big leaps that is going to upset my mum. I don't mean to do that. But that's just going to be the way it is if I want to grow. And I don't want to get on my deathbed and regret not doing these things. As it stands, I don't have any regrets. I had... A fantastic 2014. An amazing 2014. A life-changing 2014. And that's saying a lot, considering that in 2013, I went to Norway. <laughs> and that was my first time abroad in 12 years. And that was my first time to a, like, an actual country. <laughs> I know it sounds weird. The only other foreign country I've been to is France, but I, we just went in a coach and then we got out again and we're in Disneyland. And you can't really count Disneyland Paris as Paris. It's nice. And I can't wait to go back with my nephews, but it's not Paris. And I think I want to go to Paris. No! No, I'd love to go to Norway, actually. But that's kind of a, an ordeal by myself. In you know, Paris, you can get the train. 
should totally go to Paris. Let's start small first. I think I'm going to start with Glasgow. And then I'd like to go to Brighton. And yes, I think I'd have to face facts and go to London. But I do think on that occasion I would travel with my mum. But then when we would get there, I would split up with her. It's just... I've been to London. Mm, three times. And they've all been for a purpose. The first time I went to London was with part of a drama group to put on a show at the Millennium Dome. The second time was with a charity to see Goldfrapp at the Royal Albert Hall. Side note, I met Goldfrapp. Alison Goldfrapp is lovely. She's very down to earth. Which, I don't think anyone looks at Alison Goldfrapp and thinks, oh, she must be up herself. God, no. Yeah, she's exactly how you would think. And the third time was kind of spearheaded by me. But it was a trip for me. This was back when I had no confidence, so I couldn't go on my own. It was me, my mum, and my stepdad. We went to see Wicked. We went to the open home exhibition something or other and just did the sightseeing basically except none of the mainstream things just walking the streets and it was not very enjoyable having parents in tow. I don't know what it was, but I remember being very depressed at that time. I just needed to find my voice. And I think I found it now. I better have done, because I'm hosting a bloody podcast. And if I haven't found my voice whilst hosting a podcast, then there's very bad news for my listeners, my two listeners. (laughs) No, I don't pay attention. I don't know who listens to this. Um, I think of this more like a time capsule, and in a few years, maybe after I've died, people will listen to this and get a bit more insight. Hopefully not just my selfish life, hopefully insight into living with congenital erythropoietic porphyria. Looking back on my life with my grandma, she was like a third parent. No, because my stepdad's my third parent. So she was like my fourth parent. My parents divorced when I was six. But my mum and dad, they were amicable towards each other because I think they had to be because I was still in the very early stages of my treatment. As years would go on, I would have my Hickman line fitted, I would I would start a new drug treatment, I would have a bone marrow transplant from my own sister, so that's another of their children. You know, if they had wanted to not 
be in each other's lives, they would have found it difficult because it really forced them to kind of be mature and say, okay, well, well we don't love each other anymore, but, you know, we've got two children, we need to be parents for them both still. So my mum was still close to my dad's mum. And she would primarily babysit me and my sister. My grandma is a Catholic, was a Catholic. I assume religion still exists in the afterlife, because if it doesn't, that's kind of confusing. Isn't that weird? Is it, does your religion still exist in the afterlife? I don't know. God, are you there? It's me, Tom. Get back to me. Tom's brain too at yahoo.co.uk. <laughs> My grandma was a Catholic, and if she was looking after us on a Saturday, night, me and my sister would go along with her to church, and church to me was a place to sing, and I liked singing. I liked singing so much that when I was about 10 or 11, I joined a choir, but it was too much to commit to, given my hospital and school. So, I think at the request of my mum, I stopped doing choir, which was a shame. But whatever. It probably wouldn't have worked out. <laughs> um... I lived with my grandma after coming out of the bone marrow transplant unit. So I'd been in isolation for about two months. And I moved into my grandma's because my family had a dog. So the cleanest place for me to recover from chemotherapy was at my grandma's. When I got out, imagine being in confinement for two months and then finally getting out. What would you do? But you couldn't, like, go out. Because I was 13. I wrote so much. I wrote stories, I wrote lyrics, I wrote letters to companies I wrote news. I wrote uh, into newspapers. I wrote into magazines. I wrote so much; it's ridiculous. And my grandma only had the five channels. I mean, back then it was still really only four channels. What was on channel five? What did we watch when we hung up on channel five? Um. What was on Channel 5? I honestly cannot remember. All I remember Channel 5 being when I was younger was the news. It just seemed to have a news update every hour. And movies. But I never... Never used to watch it. I watched the launch, obviously, because the Spice Girls launched it. Um... No, we have the Spice Girls launched a TV channel with a song called The Power of Five. I don't know what time it is. I don't know how long I've been talking. The only way I'm going to know it's the brand new year is when it all turns madness out there. It's kind of exciting and kind of scary at the same time.
I went on these holidays to Disneyland Paris with my grandma. I didn't. I can't believe I, I mentioned that earlier and didn't even bring that up. My grandma was part of a group called Faith and Light, and they would do trips to Disneyland Paris. And so she would take me. She would take my sister. She would take my three cousins, and then. Pretty much the last time, it was just me, on my own. So I have really fond memories of my grandma, of my grandma's... Well, my the only life I know about my grandma was obviously when I was there. Unfortunately, I've never really asked about her life. And I didn't... I don't remember my granddad. He was alive when I was a baby, but then he died. He was very good at playing dominoes. Because there were some domino trophies. And I remember we have American relatives because they came to visit my grandma when I was there. I don't know when, but one of the times when I was there, these Americans were there. <laughs> and it's stuck in my memory because the um, the lady, the American lady greeted me. This is the first like American that I'd ever met. And my grandma went, this is when grandson Thomas and then the American lady goes oh hi Thomas <laughs> and it's just like this whoa it's very like American accent like I don't know where you would put that like Arkansas maybe definitely a landlocked American American state my heritage is all over the place. I'm pretty sure McNabb is Irish. Except I've now I've got Scottish heritage as well. And then let's not even talk about my mum's side. Because my mum's side were I don't I can't believe I'm gonna actually say this. I don't know if it's like this gonna like unleash oh, who cares? My mum's, uh, <clears throat> my mum's, my mum's ancestry, uh, were Romani gypsies. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> and my heritage, kind of, it kind of counts for being who I am. I don't know, because, like, yeah. The, the whole process of being a child born with porphyria, you know, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of a, um, ha archaically, it's, it's been known to happen from incest, because the, you need to have the same genes to make a child with porphyria. So my dad and my mum have half a gene each. And I carry the full gene that manifested itself as this porphyria. My sister, she only carries the half gene. So, you know, it's kind of weird to think. It, it's probably down my mum and my dad's heritage, there has been somebody that they must have shared ancestry with, because for that, I mean, where does that one faulty gene come from? It has to come from one spot. So that's kind of, that's weird that, isn't it? Like, it's kind of like coming full circle. You think it starts the mutated gene in one person and that person recreates and 
they split off into lots of different bloodlines and then they come back together for my mum, my dad and I I was created. It's that's how it, and that's how it happens. You know, it's it's not it's not a gene mutation during during pregnancy. It's something that is carried throughout and has been carried throughout history. What if I'm Who knows? Well, we were all technically part alien because, sorry, God. I know I'm gonna I'm gonna click move to junk on your email because we we came um, from a comet or whatever. That's how life was created. <laughs> Spoiler alert. I don't know what this episode has been about. It was just about me trying to find my voice again. Because it's been three weeks since I've recorded a podcast. And that's longer than I wanted to go. You know, I had that week to myself. I had that nine days to myself. And I didn't record a podcast because I was so introverted that I just didn't want to talk. I didn't think I had anything worthwhile to say. I'll tell you what I did do. I organised my lyrics by date. They used to be organised by alphabetical order. But I spent the time to, at least as close as I can, some have the date written down and some don't, annoyingly. But um, I kind of kept a list of the order that I wrote them in, so, you know, at least I can categorise them by year. And that's really reflective of what I wrote in my songs, reflect what was happening in my life at that point. Um, so, I mean, next year could be very disappointing because it could turn out that this treatment actually does nothing. And I'm kind of, I am kind of hoping to not have to have transfusions every two weeks. And I don't get my hopes up often. Okay, I just looked at the time. We've got six minutes. I tell you what the first thing the first thing I'm gonna do in 2015 is try a birthday cake flavored or um M&M I've tried a birthday cake flavored Oreo at the request of Michael Yerkser who is a Canadian who was on TV on MTV and I follow him on Twitter and Instagram and exchange tweets sometimes. So he suggested birthday cake Oreos are life changing. I tried them. They don't care. I don't know. I think I prefer regular Oreos. So I got these birthday cake M&Ms. And I think the um the correct pronunciation of that is birthday cake flavour. So it tastes like batter and frosting, I would assume. And yeah, yeah. And chocolate obviously. All I asked for for Christmas was chocolate. And boy did I get what I asked for. And money. Lots of money. So, I really need to get my social life in order. Which brings me to a very exciting point. I'm going to put this at the start of the episode, actually. Support for Tom's Brain comes from Uber. Get your free £10 credit. 
by using the code UBERTOMPOD. T O M P O D. Join now and get your first £10 ride for free. And I say, and by when I, when, <laughs> what I mean when I say support comes from Uber. I took my first Uber taxi! Ah, it, it came to Leeds, finally. And I took one with my stepsister Katie. She, we, 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 we both were carrying a lot of bags. And he's like, we don't want to take the bus. I was like, oh, it's my perfect opportunity. Um, and it's great. And so, you know, I can say that support for the podcast comes from Uber because they support me in getting around the city. And if they didn't, then I would be stranded somewhere. God knows. God does know. The aliens know. Uh, so, you know, in order for them to bring me to this house to record the podcast. So they do technically support it um but yeah as you as you heard i uh i do have a sign up code promo code and if you haven't already used anyone else's enter the code uber tom pod and you will get 10 pound credit and if it says you've already submitted this code then i'm i guess i'm afraid i'm sorry we we'll, we'll both fail each other but guess what? You help me out, I help you out. I get £10 in return when you take your first journey, when you take your first cab. So don't just join and then never use it. So if you're going to never use I mean, I've been pestering everybody with an iPhone to get it. And I think I'm going to check if it's available on Windows Phone. And if it is, then I'm going to pester my dad to get it too. But that is dependent on you actually using the credit because once you use the credit then I get the ten pound credit too. But I'm not even bothered about getting the credit. I'm just I'm so delighted to get to use that. I think I'm gonna use it tomorrow because I don't think the buses are running. <sighs> oh wow. Uber man. I mean and the great thing is, like, when I say when I can go to Glasgow, and I can use it there, too. And when I go to London, I can use it there, too, and I, I don't have to be clueless. And it's, it's just, it's all handles through the app. Oh, thank God. Anyway. Okay. The, ta the countdown has started. It's a minute to go. Thank you for being... In my life. And to the people who are not in my life anymore. I only wish you well. In your future journey. Wherever it may be. In the afterlife. In real life. I only have goodwill towards mankind. I do. To the future. I will see you next week. And we shall talk about my future, about my past, and hopefully talk to some other people from my life. Desperate to get Katie on, as I said. Uh, my mum, obviously. My dad. If I had got my grandma on, what would she have said? I think, I like to think she would have said Happy New Year. At the first of the month, I say, rabbit, rabbit. And now I'm going to try a birthday cake. m, &M. It doesn't even taste a birthday cake. What the what the flip? I'm gonna need another one for verification. Verification. So what it's supposed to be birthday cake artificial flavour. 
that I've had birthday cake Oreos. And this just tastes like chocolate. What a rip-off! Anyway, it's gone crazy. My dog's going crazy. Happy New Year! I'm not one for celebrating New Year, to be honest. My New Year should have started on September 1st. But it hasn't. So I am going to actually observe tradition. And my New Year is going to start today. I'm going to get back into my writing, I'm going to travel, I'm going to commit to this podcast, I'm going to meet more people, I'm going to visit new restaurants and try new things to eat, I am going to be a good boy and also be a naughty boy when appropriate, and I... I'm maybe going to decorate my room because it's, I've had the same room since it, its inception. Like, this room was actually built for me. Um, and that's another reason why I was staying at my grandma's after the bone marrow transplant, because when I was away, they converted the attic into two bedrooms. So, when I got finally got home from my grandma's I this bedroom existed and I and it's been the same ever since different furniture obviously I think there's one there's one piece of furniture I think that existed from the start and is still here so I may get a makeover but it's very, it's, it's, it's like, there, can you imagine, since I was 13 years old, so the, I think of all the history stored away and I just don't want to go through it. It's all neatly filed. Like, look at, look at what I had to do when I, when I organised my songs from alphabetical to chronological. I, I took days to do it and that was, that was one folder that I had to reorganise. Imagine reorganizing an, enti an entire room. Okay, we get it. It's the new year. You don't have to keep celebrating. It's happened. Get over it. In 2015, I hope to... I can't concentrate. I hope to... Well, let's, let's be realistic. I, I, I would, you know what? I hope to get a boyfriend. Oh my god, I said the B word. Oh my god, shut up! There is a chapter of 2014 that I haven't talked about yet. And I'll leave you with a little teaser. You know, all, all I will say is some people from London came to visit me. And we talked a lot. Oh my god, that sounds so exciting, but the reality of it is so not exciting, but we'll get into it in the new year. If you've been affected by any of the issues raised in today's Tom's Rain podcast, then contact me, at LGBTom. You can email me, tomsbrain2 at yahoo.co.uk. And you can even like my Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash tomsbrainpod. Support for Tom's Brain comes from Uber. Thanks, Uber. <laughs> if you want to support Tom's Brain, then contact me and I'll give you a shout out. And in return, you can buy me more non-birthday cake M&Ms, just the regular ones. I better go placate my dog. Poor dog. You can listen to fireworks while I'm 